Hey, it's Jay. You're watching Plasma Channel. Of all the methods known to create high voltage, voltage multipliers reign supreme in my opinion. Voltage multipliers are incredible devices capable of lightning level voltages. Not kidding. But their problem is they tend to be quite large and fairly expensive. So I'd like to show you a rechargeable mini desktop version that you can build yourself capable of three inch bolts of lightning. Using an arc lighter as a power source, I'd like to show you how to turn these into this. A USB desktop lightning tower. What's beautiful about voltage multipliers are their simplicity. They have no moving parts and are composed of only two items, high voltage diodes and capacitors. They're also fairly robust and can create some wicked sparks, whether you want large, small, or something in between. And the power for all these sparks comes from an arc lighter. You see, the lighter creates about three to 5,000 volts, which then passes into the voltage multiplier. As the name suggests, it increases the voltage by a factor of about 2.8 times the number of stages. Mine in particular has eight stages. This allows the 3,000 volts to blossom into 67,000. Though this is battery powered, I caution you to use electrical safety at all times. Now I'm going to walk you through the general steps of how to build your own. So let's hop to it. First, this uses an arc lighter of traditional lighter design, one with the power button on this side and as close to the lid as possible. High voltage diodes rated at 15 kilovolts, 100 milliamps apiece. Next up is 15 kilovolt, one nanofarad ceramic capacitors. And something to build those components onto is our perforated prototyping board. This is quite crucial. Now for structure and of identical dimensions as that prototyping board, we need two pieces of quarter inch acrylic. This device also requires various mounting hardware as well, including four one inch nylon spacers, four quarter inch nylon spacers, four two inch bolts, four angle brackets, and four half inch bolts. Hitting off number one is the multiplying circuit itself. First off, this multiplying circuit is completely standard and non-proprietary. And that being said, the schematics are completely universal. Take your capacitors and place eight of them on the left side of the board in a linear fashion. Bend the leads on the back in such a way that when they're soldered, you basically have one single chain of capacitors. Go ahead and do the same to the other side in a symmetrical fashion. On the back side, go ahead and solder your connections and snip off all excess leads, except for the four leads on the end. With all the capacitors in place, it's time to install the diodes. Once all the diodes are added, the array should look a bit like this. A repeating zigzag pattern with two high voltage input wires and an ultra high voltage output wire on the top. And all three of those wires are wrapped around bolts to ensure solid, strong connections. The heart and blood of the lightning tower is now complete. Component number two is the support structure. Now the circuit board needs to be supported vertically and by an excellent insulator. Uh, and that's what acrylic is good for. As I mentioned, take your acrylic and cut two identical pieces the same dimensions as the perf board. Now take your perf board and drill holes on all four corners and on the corresponding matching corners of each of the pieces of the acrylic, drill the identical holes. Using the nylon spacers and the two inch bolts, the three layers can now be bolted together. Place the one inch spacer on the side with the capacitors and the quarter inch spacer on the back with the diodes. Using the bottom bolts, bolt the four angle brackets in place and cut out a plexiglass base that perfectly fills the footprint of those brackets. Drill holes and bolt it down. At this point, it's beneficial to add a top load at the high voltage output. I used copper pipe. So what does this look like to you? It looks like the physical build is done and the only thing it's missing is a power source. This brings us to our third step, prepping the arc lighter. This entire device depends on an arc lighter for its power source. 
but in order to extract its high voltage, it needs to be modified. So first, you'll want to carefully remove the lighter's housing and find the two high voltage wires which provide the arc. Different models of lighters are built with different internals, but locating the high voltage wires is usually pretty straightforward. That's because they have a very thick insulation. Next, cut away the top of the lighter and free the ends of the wire from the ceramic holder like so. Once that has been done, add two lengths of high voltage wire to the two wires sticking out and add a layer of heat shrink tubing around the solder to help increase insulation. You can now drill holes in the lid, feed the wires through, and reassemble the case. The power source is done. Now for the quickest and fourth step, attaching the power source. If the tower has been built with enough thought, you can slide the lighter right underneath the brackets and insert the high voltage wire through the pre-existing holes. They'll attach to the bolts. You can now simply press a button and enjoy the show. And just one quick note to help prevent you from blowing up your arc lighter like I did twice. Whenever you're drawing a spark from the top load, always draw it to a wire that's connected to the electrical ground of the multiplier and nothing else. Doing so, your multiplier will last you a long time. And don't forget, you can charge it from a USB. Just don't use it while it's plugged in. You now have a voltage multiplier powered by a rechargeable arc lighter. So always keep safety in mind and go out and impress somebody. Thanks for stopping by and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to Plasma Channel. Check us out on other social media and feel free to check out our various other episodes. With science every two weeks, you stay classy.